Hey, Scott, we got to go edit this piece. You want to go edit this? What you want? You want to go edit this? You want to watch TV? You want to eat something? He's hungry. He's so hungry. Are you so hungry? Yeah, you're so hungry. I love you, Scout. Hey, guys. I hope you're well. I wanted to take a closer look at the resistors in this Heathkit HW16. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. Because so many of them were bad. Now, I'll show you what I did, and I'll show you what my plan is. I did a little survey. I did a site survey. See where that screwdriver is? I checked all the resistors from that screwdriver this way. I wanted to do a survey. See how many were out of tolerance, how many were open, if any. And um, because I'm wondering, do what, what do you do? Do you replace just the bad ones? Do you order just the bad ones? Do you check every resistor in the whole machine? Um, there's like 50-some of them. Or do you just order them all <laughs> and plan on replacing them all? Well, that depends on how many are bad and such. I'll uh, show you the list in a minute. But um, out of this uh, site, well, we'll talk about that list in a minute, okay? Um, oftentimes, the higher value ones are bad, and oftentimes, the higher power ones are bad. This is a 3-watt resistor. It's a 47K, and it measures 54K. There's an example. It's bad. It's out of tolerance. Whilst this 3-watt resistor is very close. So what do you do? Do you replace? What about the ones that are right on the edge? Do you replace them? Are they drifting? Because if they're right on the edge, you're going to drift uh, out of tolerance any day now, you know? Um, the answer is yes. <laughs> and if nearly all the resistors are near the tolerance edge, well, I guess you got to replace them all. <laughs> So I'm going to um, turn the unit over and I'll show you something on the bottom. Hang on. These are the resistors in the power supply um, connected to the filter capacitor. Um, these 200K resistors upon closer inspection are actually good. I thought one was open, but I was not making a good connection. Um... I assume they're good. I can't measure them because they're because of the filter capacitor. Um, same is true of that uh, 220 ohm resistor and this 33K. Um, so what do you do? Do you order them or not? You can't check them. Well, I could unsolder them and check them. I don't like doing that. I'm not unsoldering a bunch of parts until I'm replacing them. <laughs> You can get in trouble doing that. Um, so, I'll order them. They're not that expensive. If I don't need them, if they check okay after they're disconnected, great. I've got resistors for my parts stock. <laughs> That's how I approach it. And by the way, we're looking at a couple troublesome areas there. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. I don't need to reposition you. I will say that all the other... 3-watt resistors were good under here. They're good, but they're right at the edge of their tolerance limits. I'm replacing them all, every resistor in this machine. Now, if I can, I'm going to try to zoom you in on a trouble area. Hang on. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. See if lighting helps. Yeah, it does. <laughs> now i got to hold the flashlight and point something. Do you see a uh, cooked wire right there? Right there. It's cooked. The insulation's melted and it's up against a terminal on that terminal strip. <laughs> Not good. I'm going to pause you and show you another thing. Hang on. Okay. I'm going to step around you here. <clears throat> Point something out. Um, when I come around here, I can't find it again. Uh, what am I showing you? 
Uh, yeah. See, <laughs> turn it on, Charlie. See this uh, 100K resistor? Lead comes out, goes through the terminal strip. Look back here. Can you see it? That lead is touching the chassis. <laughs> you know what I mean? It extends past the terminal strip by a half an inch and uh, proceeds to touch the chassis. It just so happens that this terminal strip is ground, so it doesn't matter. But it's not a good practice to have leads touching the chassis. <laughs> you know? So, one more thing to talk about. And by the way, this type of power resistor here, that's a 5 watt. It's dead nuts on. I've got a visit. Hi, Scout. What you doing, buddy? What you doing? The filter capacitors. What do you do with them? Do you restuff them? I do. If you don't restuff them, what are you going to do? You're going to leave them on the chassis so it looks original? So that they could leak electrolyte all over and, and corrode everything? Uh... <laughs> Or do you just take them out of the rig and leave, leave three ugly holes there? What do you do? <laughs> I restuff them. I cut the cans apart and put the new electrolytics into cans. That's what I do. So, guys, at this point, I'm going to list all the resistors in this uh, radio. That's easy enough to list them, um, and I'll order them. I'm ready to place a big parts order with Mauser or Digi DigiKey, probably Mauser. Um, I'm going to check all the all the bulbs, <laughs> all the vacuum bulbs, using my ancient Heathkit tube tester. I've only got to use it once, and it was so fun. As a teenager, I grew up using the one at Rickman's Drugstore. Oh, I love playing with that tube tester. <laughs> So, yeah, that's uh, where the Heathkit HW-16 stands. Um, I won't talk about it again. Yeah, that's not true. I'm like, yeah, I won't talk about this again. Um, there's other things I wanted to show you in it, but I'll save them for my Heathkit Hints video. Okay, guys, I'll talk to you later. You guys take care. And uh, Blitzy, Scout, and I will be back. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, guys. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> the percentage of bad resistors was 35%. I don't need to go through the calculations. Like I said, I just did a, a site survey. 35% of the ones I checked were bad. <laughs> That's pretty bad. That's why I'm ordering them all and replacing them all, whether they're bad or not. Bye, guys. Woo-hoo!